how's everything going? So, you've probably heard about AI-generated voices, and well, the thing is, um, it's not exactly a human voice, you know? So, please forgive me if I stumble on some words here and there. But hey, no worries, right? Let's dive right in. I'd like to walk you through the initial setup of Titan FTP server after installation and configuring it as an SFTP server. SFTP, which stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol, allows you to securely transfer files between servers and clients. First step, local domain setup. To begin, you'll need to specify a local domain name of your choice, and you can also provide a description for it. Additionally, you can select your data directory and log file directory preferences. You have the option to set Titan FTP service to start automatically when Windows boots up. Moving on to the next page, create an administrator username and choose a password for it. You can decide whether or not to enable remote administration of the site. Check the box labeled Launch the Server Wizard to configure a new server to initiate the setup process. You can start the new server wizard by right-clicking on the server from the left panel. Second step, new server setup. Choose a name for your server and provide a description. You can select a specific IP address from a particular NIC interface to connect to your server or you can choose any available IP address. Next, enter the WAN address. You can specify your data and log file directories and decide whether to start the server automatically after Titan FTP service fully boots up. On the next page, select the services your server will handle. In my scenario, I've chosen FTP and SFTP. Choose a user authentication database. We're using the native user database. Next, Configure FTP and SFTP. You can use default ports or specify random port numbers. For SFTP, there's an additional step, create a key to connect to your server by clicking on Host Key Management. You can create both RSA and DSA keys with different algorithms. Check the box to kick the user if they present an invalid host key. You can configure SMTP on the next page to enable email functionality. Finally, on the last page, click Finish to create the server. After completing the server configuration, you need to create a user to connect to the server. Expand your server from the left panel and, from the User menu, select Create User. Enter the user's full name, username, and password. If you have specific groups, you can assign the user to them. On the next page, select a directory for the user. You can check Create Home Directory if it does not already exist and Account Enabled.
I've changed the default directory to a new one and created two text files in it for testing the SFTP server. That's it. The setup is complete. You can check your server by connecting to it using software like MOBA's term or FileZilla. In FileZilla, input the server details, the username, and the password you created in the previous steps, and accept the host key. Voila! You can now see your created files via FileZilla on the SFTP server. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, please consider subscribing to our channel and giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for your support, everyone.